Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and one of my favorite things during the holiday season is to play this duet here. Leroy Anderson's Sleigh Ride arranged by Michael Edwards and this is going to be a short tutorial on the secondo part. The way I'm going to organize the video is by the letters in here. So we'll start with the intro and then letter A will have a timestamp, letter B will have a timestamp and so forth. And you can find this music anywhere you purchase your sheet music. We'll start with the introduction. My goal is just to give you some tips. Rhythm is very, very important for this piece. It's in cut time, which means you're going to be feeling two big beats per measure. So one, two, one, two. I'm not going to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's cut time. C with a slash in it. So we'll start with the intro and some fingering for that section. Basically, your right hand is just alternating between this chord, E flat first inversion, and then F. And I think the best fingering for this is one, two, five, though if you have large hands like me, one, two, four also might work. Left hand is going to be one, two, because you have to hold this C with the time. All your left hand's basically playing for this until right before A where you kind of squeeze up and so slowly we're going to alternate one two five left hand gives the rhythm make sure to hold the ties for their full duration so we have are going to move up. Left hand now is not extended. So check out these long slurs. You're going to use their thumb to play both of these notes. The goal is to just have a sustaining note under these staccato notes. So with the left hand it sounds like this. So now if we go through from A to B, what you're gonna do is play this with a thumb, this with a thumb, and we're gonna keep the same fingering for this chord as well. We've got one, five, three, two, one, five, three, two. Then you're gonna hop up to the B flat and you're gonna use four, two for this one. And then the third one, you're gonna use three, two. And so you wanna feel long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. Left hand. Still in this position, alternating two, five, one, five, two, five. That's all it's doing until the fourth line there where you're going to do some octaves. With regards to the octaves, I think it's easiest in this piece just to play one, five for all the octaves. That's the mood you want to convey. So let's go through A, move up. line four and I'll go through this slowly so we got B flat chord down up down up down up reset it's the same as the beginning of A four two two before B hold the thumb and make sure the second chord is really a half note so really good accents in the left hand. Now I'm going to play the intro and A without stopping. Watch for the hold. Now B, 
The first thing you should do for this B section is go over just the melody. So don't worry about these offbeat chords. Just play the low G. One, two, one, four, three, two, one, two. Now notice the right hand is playing in the bass clef. So you're gonna start here and then go to the bass clef. One, two, four, one, four, three, two, one. And then the line three, you got the same thing. Then you're going to hop your thumb up. And that's it for the B section. The other thing to take a look at is this measure here. One, two, three, line three. This chord, you're going to play the E with your fourth finger. And then the chord itself is going to be second finger on middle C. And then the bottom two notes, G and A, you're going to play with your thumb because we really wanna be true to all of these notes that are held, that are tied. You wanna physically, with your hands, hold them down. So let's start with B. We're gonna start right hand in G position, left hands on E and B. It's gonna feel like this. Now I'm gonna scoot my left hand thumb down to get ready for the next position. So it's gonna play A. Now we're in a D chord. First inversion D chord, hop down to the bass clef, back to the G chord in the right hand, E in the left hand, A here, now this chord slides down, hop up your thumb to A, and then here's the thing I was talking about, you're going to hold this with four. Let me go over the fingering slowly for this. Left hand's gonna be one, two, one, five, one, five. Right hand, I think it's easiest to keep your second finger on that E flat and move through the chords. So it's three, two, one, four, two, one, five, two, one. Anchor on the E flat. Now I'm gonna play B through. is just about the same as A. The only difference is you're gonna have an octave at the beginning of each measure. So you have octave finger two, octave two, alternating there. And let me just go over the last four measures, then I'll do a quick playthrough of C. So the last four measures, this should feel familiar. It's like the top of the page, just the rhythm's a little different. One, two, one, two. Now fingering here, one, two, four, one, two, three. You're going to keep the C where it is. The other two voices are moving down a half step, so it's kind of nice to feel your hand tilt this way and lift up. So down, up, down, up. You really need to be on the tip of three. If it's too flat, it won't sound. So tip of three, kind of turn at an angle. Left hand, the only tip I'm going to give you is you have octave, two octave. Then when you have those accents where the mezzo forte is, Instead of playing two on that F, move up to four. We'll get you in the new position. So you have octave, two octave, then four, one, two. Now you're ready for the D octaves. So let me play through C, a little under tempo. Octave, two, octave, two. Like the beginning. section a couple things to point out you need to sustain this d with your thumb i find it easiest to just use five 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 but if you find another finger that works for you there fine the main thing is you need to hold that d and these need to be like you're creating the crescendo here fingering for the right hand you're going to have four two one and 
and then you switch to 5, 4, 2. So you're basically in this position, bottom and the top of that position. Then just work out your fingering. You have these two counter melodies going on. The right hand chords, the fingering I suggest is 2, 1, 4, 2, 1, 5, 2, 1. Then kind of walking over that, 4, 1, 5, 1, 5, 2, 1. 5-2-1, then I like 4-2-1 for the half note chords at the end of the page, and I like to come underneath that. So I'm talking about right here. 4-2-1, 5-2-1, 4-3-1 works best for me. It's worth writing in the fingering for this. So 2-5-2-2-1-5-2-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-1-5-3-
but then it's going to move up. And then here it's like this one. Then I think the best fingering for this measure right here is four, three, five, four, two, one, four, two, one. Left hand's just playing octaves. So I'll start right here. Now I'll play F slowly with good rhythm. Here we go. G is just like B. transition to the end we're here so now we're going up to a b7 five three one on the left hand right hand and then we go down to an e7 e7 right hand during the third fifth and seven then we have a7 i just wanted to point out second line from the end that chord should be an a7 the sharp should be on the c not the a so have the same fingering for that five three one and the little tune will be four five four two one so for the four chords before i five two one five three one four two one three two one and then i like to do three one because it sets us up for the chords i'm screening my camera up for the end so you can see the end okay so i'm gonna start some of my left hand will get out but You'll be reaching into the primos territory here. Here's two before I, five, two, one, five, three, one, four, two, one, three, two, one, squeeze and reset. Three, one in the right hand, one, three in the left hand. Five, three, two, one, switch, five, three, two, one, switch, five, three, two, one. And then for this one, it's easiest to do one, two, four, five. For the counting at the end, just take a look at the other piano part. They've got 12 chords before the last two. So you'll play on actually the 13th chord. So you got this. Let's play with my left hand so you hear. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, two. So here's a playthrough from H to the end. A little bit might get chopped out of the picture.
All right, so that's it. That's a quick tutorial for Sleigh Ride Secondo, the bottom part. Be on the lookout for the Primo, and I hope that helps you out, and I hope you enjoy playing this piece. Any questions, please write them in the comments, and I will respond. And as always, please subscribe, and I thank you for watching.